And good morning, everyone. Welcome to day four of Love Days a Week. Delighted to have you here and uh, also to welcome Kieran, who's going to be talking to us about metrics this morning. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Kieran to introduce himself and take you through his discussion today. Okay. Hi, good morning, everybody. So my name is Kieran Quinn. I'm the research support librarian here in Maynooth. So I'm going to do, I suppose, a brief introduction uh, to Altmetrics, and that'll be followed then by uh, Michelle Herbert from Altmetrics, and she's going to do a training session for about an hour or so. So I'm just going to deal with I suppose, the benefits uh, from Maynooth researchers of Altmetrics, and I suppose it'll inform some of you if you're not, um, you know, kind of familiar with them. Let's back up a bit there a bit. So just in case you're curious what art metrics are exactly, so the idea of them is they're going to capture online attention that surrounds your scholarly content. So for example, your articles, you know, what kind of um, reaction are you going to be getting um, online? And they're complementary to traditional citation-based metrics, and they can include, but are not limited to, peer reviews on Faculty 1000, which is an open access platform, uh, citations on Wikipedia, public policy documents, discussions in research blogs, mainstream media coverage, bookmarks on reference managers, for example, like Mendeley is particularly good on it, and mentions on social networks like Twitter. And it's going to measure the attention your research paper receives online, and it's sourced from the web. So it's going to tell you how, a lot about how often journal articles and other scholarly outputs like data sets are discussed and used around the world. So for that reason, they've been incorporated into a lot of researchers' websites, institution repositories, journal websites, and more. So for example, it will be included with uh, the Maynooth uh, University archive, our institution repository will be included in there. You'll also find it in library search, in the Scopus database, you know, they're incorporated into a lot of different platforms. And this is just a useful little um, guide here. This, this is in the Altmetrics uh, website, it's the sources of attention. So if you want to know more about exactly what sources are included you can click in there and i've included uh, the web link and i'll be circulating these slides anyway so you can have a look at that so just to check that so how does it track your research articles so initially it's going to get a listing particularly of Maynooth um, academics from RIS, the research information system also from the Maynooth uh, research archive they also collect um information from uh, the dimensions database which is a bit like scopus or web of science so they're going to collect uh, information at an institutional level for uh, different researchers. And that's owned by a group called Digital Sciences, and they also own Altmetric and Figshare, if any of you use Figshare. They also get data from the Web of Science, where it's licensed. So they get some, they don't get others. Um, and at any point, if you do have problems with the content that's included in your profile, do contact us and we'll see if we can work on that. So why use them? So lots of people are interested in them. So particularly researchers, funders, and institutions are interested in understanding and quantifying research dissemination and impact, particularly related to communicating with the public. So you can imagine, you know, a researcher provides funding, and this is a great way for them to get kind of immediate feedback on the impact the research they've funded is actually having. Um, traditionally, we've been using citations, and they've been the primary impact measure, but they can be slow to accrue and focus on academic use. So there's much more of an immediacy to actually tracking the attention uh, your papers get. Uh, Altmetrics, which track alternative dissemination forms, for example, social media have been suggested as a complement to citation based metrics. They're not an alternative. They're an enhanced, I suppose, product. You like use the two of them together. So it's giving you more, I suppose, of a, qu a qualitative side of things, whereas citations might be a bit more quantitative. You know, you can dig a little deeper with the Altmetrics. And with the increased dissemination of articles, particularly through open access, and via social media, blogs, Mendeley, and so on, you know, it's a great way of tracking all those interactions with your papers. You know, as you can imagine, like you, because of open access, there's a much more increased readership now of papers generally. So this is a way of just tracking the interactions with those. Uh, Altmetrics can showcase the attention and influence of research. So it's a record of attention. So how many people have been exposed to your, to your research? of dissemination, how far is it traveling? You know, how, how widely is it discussed and shared among scholars and the public sphere? So this would include coverage in the news, social, social sharing and blog features. So that, that'd be very useful to know, you know how widely uh, has your research traveled? An indicator of influence and impact. So again, if you wanted to show things like, you know, societal impact, cultural impact and so on, you could try that. You know, maybe an influence on public health, for example, you know, effects on larger society say, for example, in public policy documents or commentary from experts and practitioners. That's a great thing to be able to show, you know, if you're making a case for uh, funding or you wanted to put into your CV or something like that. It's going to give you a more nuanced story of your research value than just the citation. So just a citation doesn't tell you an awful lot. This will give you a bit more uh, value, a bit more depth to the, the picture of your research. And the metrics, they go 
including citation measurements, are indicative of attention and impact, but all metrics can go a bit deeper to look at the qualitative data underneath. So who's saying what about research? Where in the world the research has been cited, reused, read, etc. So, okay, so it just gives you that bit of depth of uh, information about your research. Uh, advantages to using them. So they're quicker to accumulate. accumulate. So imagine if you're an early career researcher, you know, you're writing papers, it could take, depending on your subject area, of course, it could take some time before you get citations. So this way you can pick up maybe an early reaction to your papers. Uh, they can capture a more diverse impact than citation-based met based metrics. And they apply to more than journal articles and books. So particularly, you know, as more and more material becomes open access, for example, data, it'll give you a reaction to that as well. So you can include data, software, presentations, Otherly scholarly outputs, and more and more of that is available online. So again, this is just a way of tracking that output. Uh, you can follow the trail of those who interact with your papers. So there could be potential there for new research or potential collaborators. That could be very useful. And you can use the altmetrics then alongside bibliometrics or citations, where, you know, in a situation where you want to demonstrate the value and impact of your work, such as uh, proposals, personal websites, job applications, CVs, all that kind of thing. So it's just kind of an enhanced uh, view of the impact of your research. Okay, so limitations, there's always limitations. There's great things about it, but there's also limitations. They don't tell the whole story, but that's obvious enough. Um, and similarly to citation metrics in that way, they're not a replacement for informed peer review and citation-based metrics. They're an additional understanding to the full impact of research. So you're not going to use them in isolation. You're going to use them to enhance other measures you'd have. Um, and don't include the context of the interaction. Popularity does not necessarily mean good research or positive feedback. So just because you know, your paper is popular, it doesn't mean it's the best paper ever, you know, so it's, you know, you have to put these things in context. They can be gamed less than they would have been. Uh, there, are, there are measures in place now with a lot of the providers to limit that, but obviously there's, there's always the possibility that, uh, you know, downloads, reactions, likes, all that kind of thing can be gamed to a certain extent. They're relatively new, so we know about some of the good, the value of them, but we don't know a lot of more about you know some more research is needed on that but in the meantime they are useful and hopefully they'll turn out to be you know even more useful than we have thought uh some people question significance of course and you'll always find that you know does the reaction on twitter you know really have any importance for serious academic conversations some would say no some would say yes but you know at the end of the day it does allow you to track these conversations where previously you wouldn't have been aware of them so it has value at the very least in that okay so just to altmetrics in Maynooth, um, you might have, if you're, any of you use um, Summon, which is Library Search or Scopus, you might see this already. You might see these kind of little donut shapes when you find an article. So you'll find it, for example, in Library Search, altmetrics.com is already integrated into it. In Scopus, they use a product called PlumX, very similar, also tracks um, the uh, altmetrics. In Mural, if you go into your papers in Mural, you'll see a link there for any altmetric activity in there. And then there's Altmetrics Explorer. So this is the one that uh, Maynooth University has recently subscribed to. So you can access it. So at, at the moment, the integrated versions will just give you, you know, a reaction to one paper in isolation. But if you use Altmetrics Explorer, you can go in and you can look at institutional level, departmental level, all that kind of thing. You know, you can, you can look at your identity and see the reactions to all your papers. You know, so very, very useful that way. Just click on a bit and this is the donut you'll see and this is the altmetrics uh, attention score just if i can oh sorry go back one on that i'll move this across so you can see it yeah so the altmetric attention score for research output provides an indicator of the amount of attention that is received the score is derived from an automated algorithm and represents a weighted count of the amount of attention we've picked up for research output. And I have a link there to, you'll find that in the Altmetrics website for more detail on that. But at a basic level, it's an attention score, how much attention is your research article receiving or whatever other kind of uh, data it is. Okay, so and if you see them in library search, it'll look a bit like this. You'll see a little donut you click through and you'll see there a summary of the output for that paper. You know, mentions by news outlets, policy sources, tweeters, Wikipedia, and you'll see little tabs along the top so you can go in a bit more detail on that. If you're looking in Scopus, you'll see the Plum PlumX link, and this is how they present their work. So again, policy citations, patents, clinical citations, news, blogs, Wikipedia references, and so on. So a similar range, just done in a slightly different way uh, to what metrics come. And of course, we don't have a subscription to PlumX, so you can't go into any great detail at an institutional level or departmental level, but you will get um, some feedback on your individual articles in there. 
Okay, so, so for Altmetrics Explorer, though, if you want to have a look at that, uh, you can register. So you can either use this link, which we are advertising around at the moment, so you'll pick that up, Altmetric Explorer login, or you can go into the library A to Z of databases and you'll find a link there. And you're also, if you're searching on library search and just search Altmetric, it'll bring you up that up as well and you, you can click through from there. And now I know we're going to have a training session in a minute, you know, for about an hour on it, but just to give you a sense of it, I'll just give you a couple of quick slides there. So this is what the Altmetric uh, Explorer interface would look like. And this is set for Maynooth. So you can see all research outputs from Maynooth. There's the total number of interactions, outputs, so there's 2,600 um, outputs that it's measuring. Total number tracked is that, and then you have social media, news and blogs, policies and payments, other sources, academic sources, and so on. And there's a handy little um, edit search screen there. So you can, what you can do is you can go into that and you can do a more advanced search. So for example, you can search by author, by department, publishers, DOI, if you have them, if you want to look at a particular article, if you have an ORCID ID, you can put your ORCID ID number in there and it'll search based on that. Keywords, universities, you know, there's a whole range of ways that you can search. I'll go on a bit. So there, for example, there's the Faculty of Science and Engineering. So that's their kind of breakdown. And again, you can dig in there. You can look at the research outputs, the timeline of that. Do you want, just want, you know, the last year, the last five years, whatever it happens to be, you can, you can filter that down. Demographics, uh, what part of the world is this coming from? You know, who, who is paying attention to your work? Is it people in Ireland? Is it people in America, in Europe? Uh, who are they? That kind of thing. Uh, mentions, who's mentioning it? Where are the mentions? So for example, if they're in newspapers, what newspapers are they in? So you might get more value out of, um, for example, you know, a mention in a magazine or something like the New York Times or the Guardian, as opposed to, you know, kind of a less weighty newspaper, for example. So that might be important to you to track. Also journals. You know, what journals are the mentions coming from as well so you can check that and as i mentioned with these well there are also tracking citations so it's not just the online stuff it's also citations as well so it's, it's kind of the full picture they're tracking for you uh, there's one of the top journals and collections so there's top journals top affiliations top subject areas latest news highlights latest mentions so you can see there's a lot of um valuable data you can pick up from that academic sources so again, what are the sources that it's, it's pulling this information from and what are the top outputs? So for example, so there's some on climate, neuropsychology, astronomy, astrophysics, uh, head and neck surgery, nature communications, you know, so all well worth collecting that. Now this is, I say the science level, obviously, depending on what faculty you're in, it's going to be different. Oh, let me just uh, get back out of that again. And then academic sources again on that and journals. So these are some of the top journals. So there's Astronomy Astrophysics, AORXIV, which is a repository for uh, experimental physics. So it's got a lot there. Plus One, which is Public Library of Science. That's an open access resource. Scientific reports, Frontiers of Microbiology, and so on. So very easy to track uh, the sources for the data. Just one final thing. I think in real time, anyway. It, I have a guide to this. So if you go into um, the library guides, tutorials, and into research support, I have a guide in there on research impact and in there there's an automatic explorer guide so i'll put some basic uh, information in there how to set up your account and some online guides that i've got from autometrics.com just you know how to navigate it at a basic level just to, i suppose get you going and of course i mean if you have any questions at any stage you know, feel free to contact me because uh, i'm aware it's a new product it'll probably take a bit of getting used to but i think it's going to be a very useful and valuable resource so i hope you enjoy using it so i think that's kind of it um, I'm going to stop sharing at that stage. I think we've probably a couple of minutes. So if any of you have any questions uh, you might like to ask, this could be an appropriate time. Very quick one, Kieran, uh, yeah. Brian, your psychology. Um, just, I, I'm getting the gist of it, playing around with it while you were talking. Yeah. Um, but I just don't see the score anywhere, the actual altmetric score. You see everything that you're mentioning, Yeah. the actual score. Is that something that you have to dig a bit deeper to find? Oh, that is a very good question. Let me have a look now. In all the pages that you showed, there was no actual score as mentions. There is everything except the score. It's definitely going to be covered in my, my presentation. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Brilliant. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> It'll save me going back a few screens. Safe. That's great. Anybody else got any? And this is, hi, this is probably covered then by, by Michelle, but what happens if only a small number of your publications are captured? And um, my problem is Scopus as well. About yeah. about a quarter of my publications are, yeah. are captured. Yeah. Well, I suppose for a start, we could probably have a look at and see 
would most of your papers be up in RIS? Uh, yeah, no, they are. Yeah. Yeah, and they, I wonder are they, are they have they got over? Are they in mural? We could check that out for you, Pauline, if you want to contact me. Yeah, I will. Thank we, you. We could have a chat and just see if there are any issues around that. Maybe we need to put, yeah. get the PDFs up or something, or make sure the DOIs on them. To get yeah, them uh, yeah, make sure they're harvested, I, I, you know. Yeah, I don't have them as open access. I guess that's probably an issue as well. Yeah, but we can certainly we can check that out for you if you like. Actually, I'll, I'll, sure, I'll take a note of you anyway, and I can. Uh, Thanks, I'll, I'll make some inquiries and get back on to you. Thank you. Can figure the other thing, okay. I suppose, which relates to that is you know things like ResearchGate or Academia. Yeah. EU. I mean, I'm not sadly, you know, great at keeping up on those things. Mm. They talk to Altometric, uh, Altometrics as well. You know, does it? I haven't seen them mentioned. I think see, they're not open access. But you know, people do stick up their stuff. Oh, they do, well. they do, they certainly do. But there would be there would be a wall there, I think, unless you have the premium version of it. Yeah, they, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be kind of open to everybody. They're more internal, aren't they, to academics to each other, maybe? Yeah, like maybe Michelle might have some more ideas on that. As I have yeah, yeah, so Thank you. Um, just just to let you know, with ResearchGate, we are um, we don't track them, but because you're putting papers that normally have DOIs, as long as people are talking and linking to the DOI or the um, URL of the actual publishers page, then that's what we'll track. Those are the mentions we're tracking. So with ResearchGate, if people are sharing the ResearchGate links, we won't be able to track that because it is behind a paywall and we, we can't track those kind of um, items at this time. Okay, thanks, Michelle. Um, I guess I should probably start. Uh, yep. <laughs> so let's see if I can share Sorry. my screen. Um, and can everybody see the slides? Yep. Great. Right. And yeah, and that's that is the same with academia because you do need to be a member of those particular bits. So uh, we we can't track those mentions that come from either of those sites if you're using those links. Okay. Um, I think I've got admin bits of people are still coming in but I'll just introduce myself because this is being recorded so if people miss the first few minutes they can come back but I'm Michelle Herbert I'm the engagement manager at Outmetric and I'm really here to um, answer these kind of questions so if you send them to Kieran and he can't answer them for any reason he'll forward them on to me but as you can see my email is here michelle at outmetric.com so if you do need to email me about anything specific in terms of we're not tracking a source that you want tracked, you can always email them to me, but it is better to go through Kieran so that you, they've mainly just got a record of what communications we're having with each other. Um, I'm here to do this morning a probably go over some of the stuff that Kieran has already said, so I'm really sorry, but again, just let me know if um, you want me to skip stuff because that might be easier and I'm happy for you to ask questions throughout this talk whether that is on chat I'll be a little bit slower on the chat to answer but you can always just unmute yourself and ask those questions as they come up I'm really happy for that kind of input from you all so just let me know and I guess give me one second I'm just making sure I've got everything open and then I will uh, start properly so just in case there's anyone else that's coming in okay so um you may have heard this already but during the presentation and the live demo that i'll give uh you'll hear me say output that is for uh books for journals for data sets and clinical trials the source is that place where the research is shared and then that mention is for share or reference uh, to that output. So just as an example, you've published your paper today. It's been um, accepted in a journal. The paper, you've got the DOI, so you decide you're going to talk about it in the source of Twitter. And then that tweet, and again, I will say this over and over again, we are tracking those DOIs or the journal URL page. So if you're sending the tweet, make sure that that's included, because that is what we're actually picking up to track. So you know that most people who are talking about academic work is of academics, but what Outmetric is also uncovering is who else is talking about that. So that could be interested parties, government and policymakers, or even practitioners, depending on where, uh, what areas you're publishing work in. So as an example of this, um, I hate to bring it up, but in COVID-19, when it first came out, we know that most of the people talking about um, 
research were actually practitioners. So they were GPs and nurses who were looking to how they could help their patients. Whereas we know now in 2022, most of the people talking about COVID-19 are unfortunately anti-vaxxers. So we're tracking those whole conversations for you so that you can find them in the Explorer. So I'm not going to read all of these out, but I do want to let you know that um, outmetrics are complementary to um, bibliometrics such as the journal impact factor um, and the H index. We're not trying to overtake um, those. We are just giving you extra information about what impact your work is having and outmetrics themselves. So alternative metrics are indicators of non-traditional attention and engagement with digitally published research and scholarship. So this is what I would call a typical timeline. This doesn't mean that every paper has the same timeline, but we do see that um, as soon as research is published, you'll start seeing those tweets appearing. Um, they can appear in the Explorer within five minutes um, of you posting them. Over hours and days, you'll start to see news, uh, social networks such as Facebook, blogs being uh, talking about this work, and then Wikipedia articles being updated with references. We are currently tracking 13 different Wikipedia languages, and we will be continuing to add those throughout the year, so it's always worth having a look at what Wikipedia mentions there are and where in the world they're from. And then you'll see off over months that your the policy documents, patents, and citations in other articles will come in. So although we are not... Um, a citation tracker. We do have citations in the Explorer as well from a sister company called Dimensions from Digital Science. And the sources we track, um, probably pretty obvious because we talk about Twitter a lot, but you'll see a lot of uh, light blue badges for Twitter, but each color does represent one of the sources. So you'll see a lot of purple for policy and red of news. And you'll see that we also have some historical sources. So these are sources that we aren't currently tracking uh, for various reasons, but if your paper is was mentioned while we were tracking them from these sources, you'll also see them in the Explorer. So some of these are Google Plus doesn't exist. Uh, Pinterest, no one was actually talking with the DOIs in a way that we were able to track them. LinkedIn actually asked everyone to stop uh, tracking their API back in 2015. We are in negotiations with LinkedIn again. But right now, if you see a mention from LinkedIn, it's from when we were able to track them rather than in the present. If we are able to get LinkedIn back, we're hoping that we'll also be able to get all of those mismentions from that time period that we haven't been able to track them. And the other thing you'll see within the badge is the outmetric attention score. Now, this is an automatically calculated weight of all the attention the researchers output is received and it's based on three main factors so the first one is volume how often the research is being shared overall the second is sources so each uh, source is weighted based on the expected reach which you can see in this graph on the right hand side and then the third is authors so if someone's tweeting about the same article repeatedly we're going to lower that contribution of their mentions towards the score so that doesn't mean that we won't track it in the Explorer, it just means that the score may not change even if you've got a thousand tweets um, in the details page. You'll also see that we've weighted them, so news actually has a much higher uh, weighted points than Twitter, although Twitter is our largest source. Now, Outmetrics as a company started back in 2011, and back then Twitter really wasn't the BM of it is now, so news did have the widest reach that people were most using. Because of this, we're never going to change the scores though, because we have had customers with us for as long as we've been going. So if we suddenly change the weighting scores, everything would be changed and we would prefer to be consistent. Now, obviously, if new sources do come in, say everybody starts talking about their academic work on TikTok and we can track it, then TikTok would come in and be a new source for us with the weighted points um, as that goes in. Does anybody have any questions before I go on? Hi, Michelle, can I just ask that question again? I'm sorry, but yeah. I still don't see where to see the score. I'm looking at the page right now. Yeah. <laughs> all functioning perfectly, but I, there is no score report. Okay. Um, 
Wow, this is going to be in the live demo, which I, I will promise I will answer because I feel really okay. bad because I've said it twice now. Um, no, that's fine. As long as it's coming, it's fine. Yeah, really, no, it's definitely coming. Helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, the next thing I will say is, although we do have an outmetric score, it is really worth looking at what people are saying rather than going, this paper has a high score, so it must be good. So always looking at what people are saying because attention isn't a positive impact or quality there could be a lot of negativity around. So it's just like, we're tracking those conversations so you can decide what's positive or not, because what I might think is positive, you might be like, oh no, this is terrible. So it's <laughs> so always worth looking at those bits. So as an example of not all attention being positive, this paper has a pre-COVID high score. So I say pre-COVID because before that, we were getting high scores of maybe 4,000 to 10,000, um, our metric scores, but after COVID, we've now got papers with 20,000 and above um, out metric scores. So the reason this one's interesting is you can see, but it's actually been talked about in most of the sources we track. It's been cited a number of times, and this is a, a dimensions badge, but this is actually the retracted Lancet paper linking autism to vaccines. So this one we know has got a great convoluted history it got a lot of attention, very positive attention when it was first uh, published. And then it got a lot of negative attention where people couldn't replicate the results. It was finally retracted. We know that retracted papers get even more attention, but this one's got an even more interesting lifeline where every time there is a new vaccine, people start talking about this one again. So it is always worth looking at those conversations, not only overall, but when people were talking about particular issues. So as looking past the score, this is a details page that is from uh, Maynooth. You can see that it has been published in 2019. It's got a much lower score of 68, but it has been mentioned in eight news outlets and six uh, tweets. And the reason I've pulled this one up is that it's still being talked about as in, uh, this is yesterday, the, the timestamp, and this is, useful because I can see that from the research I did, that this is uh, UCL is one of the co-affiliations, but this person here being talked about by Anne Stevenson is a professor at Maynooth. So it's worth going in and looking, even if it's not a huge amount of conversation, this paper has been published in 2019, but it is still being talked about in 2020. And again, now in 2022. So just to reiterate, it's always worth looking at those qualitative questions of who, what, when, where, or why over the quantitative of how many or how much in relation to the outmetric score. And just before we go into the live uh, demo, we do need those outputs to have a persistent identifier and mentioned in the source we track. So we're not tracking the whole internet. So if you notice that a news site that you know regularly talks about your outputs, we're not tracking then that is exactly the kind of thing that you should email Kieran or myself so we can look into that for you. And that's the same with policy sources. Um, Outmetric itself is a dynamic company. We are always looking to grow and help our customers get what they need from the Explorer. And those DOIs, sorry, those persistent identifiers are generally DOIs, but we also track PubMed IDs, archive IDs, um, ISBNs, handles, uh, clinical trials from the the US at the moment, we're looking at bringing in more clinical trials throughout the world. But if it has one of these and it's in your feed, the integration that we're getting from you, then we will be able to track it. So now I'm going to go into the live demo if I can move, get out of my large screen, there you go. So as Kieran has mentioned, you should all be able to log in to the Outmetric Explorer. If you haven't done it yet, you just need to go to outmetric.com slash explorer. It will ask you for your email address and you will be able to access this. So when you log in, this is the highlights page. You'll see that we're tracking over 6,000 outputs. Over 2,600 have attention and that's a total of 43,000 mentions. We give you this attention breakdown. So you'll see that actually most, the majority of your mentions, 85% of those come from social media. And again, a lot of these will be from Twitter. And you can hover over each one of these to see those breakdowns. You'll see also that here you'll see we have videos. These are YouTube videos. Again, if we're tracking the YouTube channel, 
and you're using those DOIs or URLs in the descriptions, then we'll be able to pull that into the Explorer for you. And then the last one is academic sources such as peer review and faculty opinions. Now, if I hover over, I can click on any of these and this will actually take me into the mentions tab. I'm not going to go any further into the highlights because I saw that Kieran covered this here, but I do want to mention that there are a number of ways to track either your own outputs or a department view by going in the first instance to the My Institution. In this one, you'll see that we're tracking over 13,000 authors, and this is alphabetically by last name. And we're also tracking departments. So again, some of these have sub-departments, so you can go in and keep scrolling down to a particular area, or you can look at the full department view. So if I just click on this one right now, you'll see view results, and I'm into the research outputs. Now, this is where the score comes in. So these are all the outmetric scores for the Faculty of Arts, Celtic Studies, sorry, Celtic Studies and Philosophy. And I'm seeing that they're all rated by the outmetric attention score highest first. So as you go down, those scores are less. And again, this is just for one department. If I export this tab, and again, you've got this as a CSV or the results in API, you can then download all of the um, outmetric scores that are here. But you can also then track by particular sources, publication dates, or mentions in a particular time field. So I'm just going to quickly just click on the compass to go back to the highlights page to remove the department view. But I'm gonna go back into the research outputs for the full university so you can see the difference in the numbers of scores. Now, if I'm only interested, at, say, in looking at papers that have policy um, mentions, I'd click on this view and I can now see that the scores are very different so the way they're numbered is I'm looking at the one with the most policy mentions. So that's this paper in Nature Reviews, but I'm still seeing those outmetric scores every single time. So what I would then do is let's go into this one, the article in Nature. I'll click on the actual details page. I will see all of the mention buys. I'll also see that these are those dimension citations and readers on Mendeley. Now we track this for every single paper that uh, we have in the Explorer, but they don't actually affect the score. So although we're tracking that information for you, it really is just there for your reference rather than it's going to affect the overall score. So on this page, you can go directly to the published paper either via the DOI or the Pe PubMed ID in this case. We give you those Twitter demographics, so where in the world those geographical breakdowns are, but also using an algorithm, we're letting you know who is talking about this paper, whether they're members of the public or scientists, or in this case, practitioners. And then we can go into each of the following tabs to actually see what was being talked about at that point. So with news and blogs, you will always see um, which news um, source is talking about it. So here we've got National Geographic in French. I can click on any of these hyperlinks and go directly to that paper to read what was being said. And you will see that we are tracking um, papers, sorry, news sources in a lot of different languages. And then that's the same with blogs. You hover over the hyperlink, click on it, and you will be taken into that blog post. So that's also the same with policy documents. But again, when you click on that, you are likely to be taken directly to the actual policy PDF. Twitter's a little bit different. As you can see, we've got eight pages of tweets here. Now, if I want to know who someone is, I can click on their name and I'll be taken directly to their Twitter profile. You can see that we've also got dates underneath here. If I click on the date, I'll actually be taken directly to that tweet. And when I am looking at a particular uh, Twitter users, I'll also see how many followers they have. So this can be quite useful when you're trying to see how much impact a particular Twitter user is, if you want to connect with them, to find out who they are but also you can use the functionality of reply, retweet, or favorite from here. And if I clicked on it, it will take me to Twitter. I'm not replying from the Explorer, but I can go directly to that if I wanted to uh, respond to any positive or negative information about my research. Facebook, again, is different because we are only tracking public pages. So we're not tracking your personal Facebook, um, but if you are part of a public group and you talk about um, a paper here, we'll be able to pull that in for you. We're not tracking comments from it. So if you wanted to see that public group, I'd again, click on that uh, date and 
group name and then I'd be taken to Facebook so I can research more. I don't have um, Facebook. So if I clicked on this, it will ask me to log in, but you can start seeing um, that information. And obviously if you use Facebook, you'll get more information than I'm seeing. Uh, Wikipedia, as I've mentioned, we are tracking in a lot of different languages. So again, if they're citing outputs, either books or journal articles in their references, that's what we're tracking. So again, you can go in and read why these papers have been, sorry, why these Wikipedia articles have been updated and are talking about the work. Um, I'm not gonna mention Google Plus too much just because it's it doesn't exist anymore. With Reddit, it's very much like Facebook. We are, um, again, not tracking comments, but you can go in and follow those Reddit um, feeds and threads as they go along. Um, this one does have research highlights. So this has been recommended in faculty opinions. Again, you can out click into that to see what the actual recommendation was. These are those YouTube videos. I'm not gonna click on one now, but if you did, you would see that these YouTube channels do uh, talk about the work in the description. And then the last one is you've got this dimension citations here. So if you don't have dimensions, that's fine. We're going to always show you the last three papers that have actually cited your work. So if you clicked on these, you would be taken to that actual uh, paper. But if you wanted to, you can also click on the 375 um, number or the number there. You will be taken to a free version of dimensions if you don't have access to it. And you'll get some information about the publication citations and references. The last thing I'll say about the details page is that we do have an alert me about new mentions. So if you're interested in a particular work and you want to see what mentions they're having, or maybe you sent your own tweet and you want to see uh, what the feedback is on that, you can put your email address in, click on the start notifying me. And every day you, that there are mentions, you'll get notified and you can cancel those emails at any point or you can cancel them here. So that's just what the details page looks like. Again, you, this was filtered by policy. I can also filter them by any other source and even citations. So I can see which article has got the most citations. And what's really useful is that you can also look at timeframes. So I can look at, say, I only want to look at papers that have been mentioned in the past month. I can use that search. And now I'm seeing those mentions in the past month. And that's the outmetric score and how many mentions were in that time period. You can also on the research outputs, view those results as a list. So again, once I open it, I'm seeing the paper in the same view, but I can see how many authors were at Maynooth in this case, those department views as well, and then subject areas. If the paper has been worked on by other affiliations, you'll only again get those authors at your institution, but you'll also get the affiliations on. So if you've then said, I'm really interested in seeing how many times Maynooth worked with the University of Southern Denmark as an example. If I click on that, I'm now going to see that there's 19 papers have been mentioned, but 23 outputs. And again, this is still being searched on mentions in the past month. But if I go back to that grid view, I can now see all of those papers that have been affiliated with another university. So you can say, do we want to work with them? When you look into the papers, you can see if it's the same team that you work with consistently. So you just get more information from those kind of searches. And again, you can save a search on any page. And again, you can always export those as a tab or open those results in an API. The last thing I'll mention on research outputs, because I've spent quite a lot of time here, is this is showing you the, the most last mentions. But you'll see a lot of these haven't got any mentions in the last month. So these are just older mentions. And at the very bottom, you'll see that there's some ghost badges. Now, this means that this is coming from your feed. So there's that blue tick that says this is from the National University of Ireland Maynooth integration. You've told us this is you want it tracked, but right now nobody has mentioned this paper. But if it does get a mention or you decide you want to tweet about it, that will then change to that light blue Twitter. Does anybody have any questions on the research outputs? Okay, so just moving on, the next tab is the timeline. And again, now I'm only looking at those affiliated with Southern Denmark. So I'm just going to go back to that compass and clear my search and start again. So you'll see that we're showing you um, 
all time mentions. Now it does start from 97. So if I hover over it, I will see that there's one patent mention that I can use the slider along the bottom to get a, a different kind of view. So if I say, I'm really interested in looking at, at that data from 2012 to 2022, I can then hover over and see all of those mentions. If there is a date that looks very interesting to you, say I'll say this one mentions for April 2018, I can click on this and this will actually take me into the mentions tab. So this will be the last mention we received in April 2018, that I can see every single paper that was mentioned in that month view and also the tweets or the blogs or the news, whichever um, bits were there. And again, you can save that search, export it. Now with the timeline, I've given you the overview, but again, you can use the Zoom button. So if you're just interested in the last year, using the Zoom buttons is probably easier than using the slider at the bottom. Again, I can hover over, but if I'm only interested in saying looking at news, I can click on that button. So I'm looking at a year view and news, and now I'm only interested in looking at those mentions for the week um, of July. So again, clicking in will now show me all news stories in that time frame in the mentions tab going down. I can also decide, and I'll just quickly go back to that one year view. Um, but if I say I'm just interested in looking at policy and patents together, I will hold down the control key on a laptop or a command key on a Mac, and I can start clicking and I'll get those add additional views. And again, if I'm holding that same button, I can add and remove sections as I want just to get those different kind of views depending on what I'm interested in. Now these aren't downloadable, but you can use a snipping tool to share these with colleagues if you want, or you can export that data again and create your own graphs if that's what you want to do. Now demographics just sounds a little bit misleading because it is a geographic view. So we give you um, the geographic data for Twitter, Facebook, news and policy. So you'll see the country on in the graph, but I can also hold over and see how many uh, tweets were from Russia for all of the data. If I look at news and I say, I'm just interested in looking at news from the United Kingdom, I can then click on that. And again, I'm back in that mentions tab. And this time I'm looking at all news stories in any time frame, but only from the United Kingdom. So again, I can always go into those kind of bits. I can do that with policy documents. In this case, I'll just choose Ireland. And again, I'm going to see all of those that we have in that particular view, but from any time. Now, once I'm in the mentions tab, if I've come from either the timeline or demographics, I can always hit reset and that will take me back to the full view. So this was the last tweet that we received last night. So the mentions tab will always give you the last view from the day before, if you're looking at any time. Uh, we have a snapshot that updates all of our mentions overnight. So that's UK uh, midnight time, sorry, GMT. Uh, at midnight, we update this. So if you are using it at a particular time and you know a news article has mentioned your paper today, but it's not showing in the Explorer, it will be there tomorrow. So once I'm here, again, I can add sources. So I don't have to go from the timeline or demographic view, but if I'm only interested in policy documents, I could click on that. You'll also see that we've got tweets all and tweets original. So if I don't want to see all of those retweets, I can use tweets original and hit apply. And then I'm only seeing those original tweets. I can also add in my own time frames. I can use the buttons at the top to go into a particular month or year. And again, I can type in a country. So if there's a particular source that you wanted to use to find out what mentions you are getting, I can start typing in, in this case, The Guardian, hit apply. And then I'm only looking at when The Guardian has talked about work. And again, you'll see it's about the blue tick saying this is from my integration. But you'll also see with news and policy that the article could be talking about more than one work. So in this case, as soon as I open the show more, I can see that two papers from Maynooth have been, and they'll always be at the top. But I can also see what other papers from other universities were being talked about in this article. So I can do comparative analysis, again, either going into each details page and getting that data or from exporting this tab. And I mention exporting this tab again on every slide, but this is because each result, if I download a CSV on this page, it's gonna be very different from the research results that I receive on the research outputs. So it's always worth uh, looking through 
uh, the tabs, having a play around, exporting them to see what information you can get and which is the most useful to you. Now you'll notice that we do have a mention sources tab. This is slightly different. Um, so this is going to give you the total mention count. So we can see that this tweeter, Atom Skis Sanakan, has mentioned papers from Mainu 657 times. You can see how many followers they have. If I want to see the last three tweets, I can click on that show recent mentions. So again, this person is sharing work, the same work to a number of people. And also I can click on that view all mentions, which will take me back into the mentions tab. Now, it's always sorted by total mention count, but you can also flick through to Twitter follower count. So you'll see here that um, NASA has mentioned one paper once, but that's gone to 2.6 million followers. So again, when you're doing this kind of look, it's really good to see who your influencers are. Um, is it just journals tweeting about the work in this case? Or is it uh, really interesting people that you would never have thought would have talked about your work? So it's always worth going in, finding out who they are. And again, I'm mostly in this one, I've been talking about Twitter because they show as your highest users. But as I scroll down, I can see uh, blogs and news and also policy sources that mention you and how often. So this can just be a very useful way of kind of like narrowing down who is talking about your work. And again, you can search by these particular sources in this view. And the last one is journals. Now this one is mentioned. So a the way this is, sorry, the way this page is structured is this journal has got the most mentioned research outputs in my current very broad overview search. But if I click on news mentions, I'll then see that nature has the highest number of news mentions. If I want to see what those 13 outputs are, I'll click on nature and I'm taken back to the research outputs. But again, now I'm looking at everything from Maynooth published in nature. So I've got these 14 outputs. So again, I can save that search and follow through on what's going on there. And again, if I click back on the journals from doing this search, I'll only see nature. And if I click on any of these, it will be for that search. So again, I'll have to go to the compass to clear out. Now I've mentioned that there are other ways of searching for yourself or your department. So the first one is that My Institutions button. We do also have a quick search. So if I click here and I start um, looking for people. So if I just use Cullen as an example, I'll see that there's funders and affiliation and then verified authors. So if I click on this, choose from seven other matching authors, I'm actually taken from the quick search into the advanced search. And then I can go in and see, so sorry, Pauline, because you're on the call. If I want to use and see just anything by Pauline, I'm going to run the search. And then I'm now looking at everything from Mainu from Pauline. And I can go in and look at the research outputs, or you can do this at the same time. So if you want me to carry on with this, I will. <laughs> um, I don't want to focus it on anything, but that was how I did the quick search. But if I just want to go into the advanced search, I just click on edit search up here. I can clear the fields if I don't want to search for Pauline anymore. And you'll also notice that this is in the My Institution Only view. So you do have also access to the full Outmetric database. If I just click on this now, you'll see that you actually have access to 36.6 million outputs and that's over 205 million mentions. So you can do much broader searches outside of Maynooth but you have that option to play around. So we just quickly just stay in the My Institution Only view, and this is deciding to freeze on me. It's, that's what you want in <laughs> your trainings. So I'm just going to use that button again to go back in, but generally you should be able to switch between them. But yes, you can search for verified authors here. So again, if you just start typing a surname or a first name, it will pull that up. And again, I can start typing in here. Um, arts and it is going to bring up those institutes or faculties so you can do very broad searches here rather than having to search for someone in the, that my institution view you'll also see that we do let you search by uh, publishers so again if you are looking at particular journals and you don't want to use the journals tab you can search for particular publishers you can search by doi prefix or even a journal name so this is a good way to see do I want to publish here? Um, what kind of publications are they doing? So you could say, 
I'm looking at the four Altmetric database, say the University of Manchester. And let's see if I can spell today. So that's not of Manchester, yeah. Okay, so if I'm looking at the University of Manchester and I want to see any time they've affiliated with my institution, I can see that there's 38 papers. I can immediately go to those journals. But if I say, I'm just looking at biology let letters in this case, but I go back into that edit search and remove the University of Manchester, I can now see if there's more papers with this journal or more that aren't affiliated with Manchester. So you can see that there's one more in this search. Again, um, I can also say, I want to know what's being funded. So I'll just use the Wellcome Trust as an example. So in this case, I'm looking at Maynus funded by the Wellcome Trust. So I can go in, see what kind of attention those particular papers were getting. So that's 54 outputs, 39 have mentions. I can then decide to move into the full database and see what mentions the University of Manchester have got, in this case, from the same funder. So you can do those kind of comparisons. And the reason I say comparisons is that I would have to do this one, run that search, see that in this case, the University of Manchester gets funded a lot more, but I could then save that search and export because then I can see like, what are they working on that is being funded by the Wellcome Trust? What do we work on that gets funded by the Wellcome Trust? Where, what do we want to work on so we can get funded? So just different questions to ask yourself when you're doing those kind of searches. You can also see that we do have subject areas. So if I just type in one, you'll see that these are all the subject areas that we're uh, currently tracking as a field of research. So you can always do that. So you can again say, I'm looking at studies in human society in the full Altmetric database. So I'll run that search. And again, it's still thinking about it because it's loading, but I can then do that search and see what, what journals are publishing, what, what kind of mentions they're getting and so on. And then the last thing I'll say, because I don't, I, there's lots of things you can do here, is that we are searching all outputs, but if you're only interested in looking at books and book chapters, you can just click on those. So again, if I'm, I don't know why my, my thing is freezing on me, so I'm just cheating. But if I just said, I'm just interested in seeing those books and book chapters from Maynooth, instead of all outputs, I would run that search and see that. So again, this can definitely help in terms of what kind of information books are getting in comparison to a journal article. So if I chose Wikipedia citations, I'll see that quite a number of these books have been cited in Wikipedia. And again, all you're doing is clicking on that all outputs to go in. And you'll also see that we're doing types of open access. So right now you're seeing everything you can choose open access only. And again, you can see that we're broken down by gold, bronze, green, and hybrid. And again, it, you could say, I'm only interested in gold and run that search. So again, you'll get all of those information. This one's currently via Wikipedia, but I can save that search and move it back to the Altmetric attention score. And again, it, you will always get slightly different views depending on what you've sorted by. And again, you can also say, I'm just interested in that closed access because then you can do a comparison on whether open access is getting more information, sorry, more mentions from open access. So again, find what's useful for you because there are so many ways of searching. Now, when I say that you can track your own institution by the verified authors and departments, if you are looking at another university, you'll see we don't have a field for that. You will be able to talk, type in the affiliation but if you want to see a particular person um, or department view from another university, you can do this by scholarly identifiers. So either DOIs, ISBNs, PubMed IDs, uh, national clinical trials in the US. And all you're doing is copying and pasting those DOIs and so on into this box. So as an example, here's some DOIs. Um, if this was one person, I'd save that. It's recognizing it as 19 DOIs and I'd run that search. And then I would go back and remember to go into the full Altmetric database, and then I'll see those 19 results. So again, I do it all the time, not remembering where I am between the My Institution view and the full Altmetric database, but I can go in, I can save that, keep an eye on it. 
and the other way is orchid. So right now, um, people do use their orchid, and but they do, nobody's being told that they must record all of their publications. But if you know someone who is, you can type in their orchid ID. And at this point, we can only track one orchid at, at a time. But if you wanted to, you could go and view uh, this particular orchid and see what's being getting attention and not. And again, just remove it when you're finished. And then we also use PubMed queries. So if you are using PubMed uh, query searches in your own uh, work and you want to see what those results are, you can again, copy and paste um, complicated or very simplified PubMed queries into the Explorer. Once I click on save, it's going to recognize those PubMed queries as a PubMed query and it's over 4,000 results. So when I run that search, I'll be looking at those mentions. So again, highlights, there were over 4,000 PubMed queries. We're actually only tracking 2,613 of those, but 2,200 have attention and so on. So it is always worth looking in and you'll always see that there will be a slight disparity between the number of search results and the actual outputs that have, have attention already. Now, I will also just say about the PubMed query search, this is the only place uh, that allows you in the Explorer to do a Boolean. So you can use and or or in this one. Whereas if you decided to use titles or keywords and you put and or, even though it says it up here, um, it will actually try and find the ands ors if you put them in the keywords. So if you're trying to do say COVID-19 and vaccine, you could do that here, but I wouldn't recommend it if you were using the keyword search up here. So the last thing to mention is we also let you do searches by publication dates. So I can choose to say, I'm only interested in looking at publications in this case uh, for this year. Again, I'm in the full Outmetric database in this one. And I can also say that I'm looking at mentions during a particular time frame. I'll stick it on any time any, at the moment, but I'm now looking at everything that's been published um, in this, in this year, sorry, in this month, because I can't read um, American dates. So um, what I would like to say before we go into Q&A, if anybody has questions, is you'll see that I saved a number of searches. They're all here in the save searches. These are seem to be unlimited. As you can see, I've probably got a thousand save searches in my year at Outmetric. All of my searches are uh, named with what they Ah, so you'll see that there's that Southern Denmark save. I can rename these uh, if I want to make them more usable or user-friendly so I can come back and see what they are. And then I can send myself daily, weekly, or monthly emails. So these are static that will tell you if you click daily, how many mentions this particular search had in that time period. And you can click on daily, weekly, and monthly and you'll get those all every morning. And again, you can remove those. It's telling me I'm gonna get an email alert and I've unsubscribed now, but I can also make shareable reports. So if I click on that button, it's gonna think about this now. Um, you'll see that there's a pre-populated report. Um, so this is telling me my, everything from full Outmetric database, the by Outmetric Attention Score, affiliated with University of Manchester, funded by the Wellcome Trust. So this is giving me the full report overview, then all of those attention source breakdowns, attention over time, and those top five research outputs. Now, I can print this review, uh, sorry, print this report as a PDF and share that with people, or I can use the edit report button, and then I can edit it. So if I don't think the report overview is useful of it, any of these, I can just remove them all. I can again rename this and I can then use those blue buttons on the side to add it in sections again. So as this one's showing, it's the attention over time. I'll leave that there, but I might add another attention chart, sorry, chart and say, I'm interested in news mentions and I'll say previous cal calendar year, click on done. And then I might also want to track this year. So I'll add another one because again, you can have as many of these charts as you want. And I'll say current calendar year. So I can then start seeing that for this particular search, it's had a lot more news mentions in January 2022 than it did in January 2021. Um, and I'll just add those top outputs again in, and then I'm gonna save those 
I'm going to click on this make public and then save changes. Now the make public button doesn't mean that anyone on Google can go and find this report, but it does mean that I can now share it. So as soon as I get that link, I can add it into uh, the chat and anyone can just go in and view this. Now the reason shareable reports are really useful is that you can make these as broad as this one is, or as narrow as you'd like. And you can share it with people who don't have access to the Explorer. So if your department is doing work that you want to promote, you could create one of these and have that on the department website. And it's really useful because anybody can hover over and I can see what those mentions are, but I can't click on them. They don't actually go in into any view, but I can keep tracking. So these will keep track of any news mentions that come in in this year. And again, these you can click on these, but they just go to a free page. So people can go in and see what's happening, but again, they're not going to go into the Explorer. So that can be really useful. And again, you can always uh, edit the report and not make it public anymore. But when you go into your safe searches, you'll see that that's now a shared report. So I don't have to remember to do it. That's just running in the background. Anybody I've shared with a link will always be able to view and go in. And I just want to show you what um, this SLU, which is a Swedish university, is doing uh, with the shareable reports. They're tracking their sustainable development goals. So if I just click on SUG6, which is going to freeze on me, you'll see that they've got their publications uh, group. So this is every work they've done on SUG6. And then they've got that our metric report. So when I click on this, this is taking me to their shareable report. So you can see it's not as complicated as the one I just showed you that I just created, but it's got the attention source breakdown and the top five outputs for those particular DOIs and then the attention over time. So you can make these as simple or as complicated as you want, depending on what information you want. Um, what SLU did was collected all of those DOIs, put it into uh, the scholarly identifier search and clicked on run. And that's how they created their SDGs um, reports. But what we I'd like to say is that we will actually be bringing in our own SDG filter later this year. Um, I haven't been given an exact date, but I'm really hoping it's in March. And that will either be another type of, so it'll be, you can click on the type of SDG, create your search, and then it will bring up what SDGs match that, or it might be a drop down uh, like this one where I can type one and the drop box will come down. So I don't know how it's going to look yet. I'm very excited, but that's what we're doing with um, sustainable development goals to make it easier for you rather than having to find those DOIs first and putting in. But uh, just some food for thought on things that you can use for shareable report for. Um, we have around 10 minutes left. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, and if you don't have questions, do play around and then get in touch with Kieran or myself with questions on either how to do a particular search or even, I can't remember how you did this, Michelle. Can, can you just show a run through or send us a video of that little bit rather than watching the full recording, but it is all recorded now. <laughs>